Lecture 1.2, Day 2, Transformations of Functions. This scenic photo is of the Northern California coast, taken at Pebble Beach, California. And the second photo is Seal Rock, named for obvious reasons, also at Pebble Beach, California. Both photos were taken by Vicki Kelly in 2009. The rules for shifting, stretching, shrinking, and reflecting the graph of a function make it easier to sketch functions by hand. Since we will be frequently using graphs in our study of calculus, we will do a quick review of those rules. If we know how to graph the parent graph of a function, then we can modify that graph to get the one we want. For example, if I use the graph of y equals x squared, the shortcut for graphing this basic parabola is to go over 1 and up 1 and draw our first dot. Then we go over 2 and up 4 to draw our second dot. And using symmetry, we can sketch the parabola. Now, if I look at the function with a constant added at the end, as in y equals f of x plus d, for example, I might use y equals x squared plus 2. Adding a positive number at the end moves the graph up. So we just move the vertex up 2 and redraw the parabola. If I add a constant inside the parentheses, adding a constant to x inside the parentheses moves the graph to the left. In this case, we can take the vertex and move it left 3. And redraw the parabola. The horizontal changes happen in the opposite direction to what you might expect. Positive moves it to the left, negative moves it to the right. If I put a constant in front of the function, as in y equals 2x squared, placing a coefficient in front of the function causes a vertical stretch. So in this case, the graph goes up twice as fast. Instead of going over 1, up 1, now we go over 1, up 2. And we can redraw the parabola. If the coefficient is negative, then the graph is reflected about the x-axis. So in this case, we go over 1 and down 2, and we can sketch in our parabola. This time, I've added a constant inside the parentheses. Placing a coefficient inside the function in front of the x causes a horizontal shrink. In this case, the graph expands horizontally half as fast. So instead of going over 1, up 1, I go over 1 half and up 1. 
So I end up with a thinner parabola. The horizontal change happens in the opposite direction to what you might expect. So putting a 2 in front makes it half as wide. Putting a 1 half in front would make it twice as wide. In this case, if I clear the parentheses, I get y equals 4x squared, which is a horizontal shrink, which is the same as a vertical stretch. But this is not always true. If I look at the graph of y equals negative 2x in parentheses squared, the coefficient inside the function of, in front of the x is negative, and we get a reflection about the y-axis. In this case, since we started with an even function, we cannot see the reflection. So let's look at an odd function. We start with y equals x cubed and put a negative sign in front of the x. Placing a negative coefficient inside the function in front of the x causes a reflection about the y-axis. This time we can see it. To summarize the rules for transformations of graphs, we start with a generic function, y equals a times f of b times the quantity x plus c and add a plus d at the end. The coefficient at the beginning causes a vertical stretch or shrink, or if the coefficient is negative, a reflection about the x-axis. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, it is a stretch. The constant inside the function causes a horizontal stretch or shrink, or if negative, a reflection about the y-axis. If the absolute value is greater than 1, it's a shrink. Adding a constant inside the parentheses is a horizontal shift. A positive value of c moves the graph to the left. And finally, adding a constant at the end causes a vertical shift. The positive value moves it up. The horizontal changes happen in the opposite direction to what you might expect. Now let's look at a more complicated example. y equals the absolute value of x should all know how to graph that. It's the V. Now I want to graph the function y equals negative 1 half times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4. The negative sign is a vertical flip. The 1 half in front moves it down half as fast as the standard absolute value graph. The minus 3 inside the absolute value signs moves it right 3. 
and the plus 4 at the end moves the graph up 4. So instead of starting at the vertex, we're going to move right 3 and up 4. We also know that the graph is going to open downward and it's going to go down half as fast. So there's our vertex at 3, 4. And we can draw our graph.